Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over some of the new features for World Partition inside of Unreal Engine 5 Preview 1. I apologize for taking so long to get this video out. I had to re-record it for a couple of reasons a couple of times, and this most recent recording, one thing to note is that I neglected to ensure that my microphone was plugged into my computer completely, so it used the wrong one and it picked up a heater that turns off intermittently in the background much more clearly than my usual microphone does. I did my best to reduce the sound in the edit, but it's still there a bit. Anyway, with that out of the way, I'm going to roll the video. So the first big change is that World Partition and one file per actor are now enabled by default inside of Unreal Engine 5. You no longer need to go to your project settings to enable world partition, and you no longer need to enable the one file per actor setting in an actor's detail panel. Another new thing is the new world conversion tool. If you go over to the tools bar, there's a convert level option, and we can use this to convert non-world partition levels to world partition levels inside of Unreal Engine 5. In the previous early access release, we had to do this with a commandlet that ran from the command line, so this is definitely an improvement. I've already converted this minimal default map that I'm in right now that's just a basic map that you start in in a new project. So let's grab this advanced lighting map. Now there's some options here. The most important one is in place. Now the, by default, it is unchecked, meaning that when you convert a world to use world partition, it'll create a new file with underscore WP added onto the file name as a suffix. If you tick this box, it will delete the old world and replace it with the new world. Now, I recommend leaving this unticked just in case something were to happen. This is still a preview version of the engine, so there could still be bugs. You would not want to lose any of your work. There's also these advanced settings here, and I will cover the ones that I can briefly. I'm just going to be reading straight from the Unreal Engine 5 Early Access documentation. And so the documentation has been updated as of the recording of this video, so not all of these options are on here, and it doesn't go into super deep detail on any of them. So first off, we have the verbose logging, which displays verbose logging, and when you convert a world, it shows a little like log command prompt sort of window and verbose logging will just log more, essentially. There is also this delete source levels option, which deletes source levels after conversion. Now I think, I'm not sure this might be redundant now that we have this in place option up here, and it might just be something that was carried over from the command line commandlet. We have the generate any, which generates a default dot any conversion file for the map that does not do the conversion, and report only, which reports what would have been done during the conversion, but does not do the conversion. I'm going to leave these settings on their defaults, and I'm going to click OK. And it will convert the map that we've selected to World Partition. I'll say that the conversion has succeeded, and it opens up the new map. Now, you should also have this World Partition window opened up on this side, and from it you can see the grid cells that it generated from or for this map. Now, you'll also notice that there's nothing here and there's nothing to worry about. All you have to do is select some of the grid cells, right click, and select load selected cells. Another quick tip about world partition is that you can double tap anywhere on this grid and teleport yourself to that location. It's super useful and much easier than turning up your camera speed and flying around in some cases. Now, another big new feature is that World Partition supports another new thing 
in the preview version of UE5 is that World Partition now supports landscapes. So I will go ahead and create a new level and there's actually a new template here called Open World which is a large landscape that's been sculpted up some that is using World Partition. Now this is great but more often than not you're going to want to create your own landscapes and so to create a new empty level that has world partition we just go to new level and we'd select empty open world so now i will create that and one quick tip for getting your lighting set up for an outdoor scene is to go to window and to select the environment light mixer I'll probably also want to go and choose normal plus advanced in this drop down menu it will show all the options for the different things you create and you can just click through and create your skylight click real-time capture create your atmospheric light create your atmosphere volumetric clouds height fog and it's all set up really quickly now to create a landscape we go over to this select mode here and we will select landscape. I'm going to turn these values all the way up. Most of the time you probably won't need a landscape this big, but to showcase world partition, I'm going to make a landscape that's as big as possible with the current implementation. But for now, we have our landscape and if you look over here in the world partition window, there's absolutely nothing here. There's no grid cells, no anything. To fix that, all you have to do is save the level that you're in. And each time you would do something that would require a new cell to be generated, again, you just need to save the level and it will update in the world partition window. Now we have world partition enabled in the world. One file per actor is turned on by default. The preview does pretty much everything you had to do manually inside of Unreal Engine 5 early access automatically. World partition is the default. You don't have to go through a setup process with it like you did with world composition in UE4 or world partition in the early access. It's much more streamlined in the newer version. Now let's talk a bit more about how world partition works. The streaming of these cells at runtime is determined by two factors. First is the position of streaming sources, and second are some settings you can find here in world settings. If you go down to world partition, runtime mesh, runtime settings, and grids, and index, we have our grid settings here. Now I'm going to cover these first, and then I will circle back around to streaming sources. So, we have a grid name, a cell size, a loading range, a block on slow streaming, a priority, and a debug color, and a preview grids option. I'm going to set that to true, and now we can preview our cell size and our loading range. Now, the individual grid boxes here are our cells, and the circle around them is the loading range. Now currently it looks really small but it's actually because we are quite far above the ground. If we lower ourselves down actually uh, not nearly as small as it looked to begin with but still eh, it looks a bit small so we could turn up that streaming size so I can turn up our loading range a bit and that looks like it might be a bit better, might not. For now I'm going to turn it down a little bit closer to the defaults, but you guys feel free to experiment, play around, find whatever works for you. I'm just going to leave these values at something maybe on the lower end, just to play it safe while I record this video. The second factor is streaming sources. Let's go back to this regular mode here. And the first thing to know is that a player will always be a streaming source. Cells will always be loaded around a player at runtime. But you can also create 
a blueprint and add a world partition streaming source component. And when in the world, it acts as a streaming source and the nearby cells will be loaded in. If you're wondering why you might want to use something as a streaming source that's not a player, one example would be some sort of teleportation device where the player can teleport between two faraway points and you'd want to make sure that things are loaded in before the player arrives at the new point so that when the player arrives, the nearby cells are already loaded. The next thing I want to discuss is hierarchical levels of detail. Simply put, hierarchical levels of detail, or HLODs, which is what I will be referring to them as for the rest of this video, are level of detail meshes generated for the world as a whole, for each cell. And these are streamed in and loaded and shown in the distance when a cell is unloaded, so that instead of a cell disappearing, it's replaced with a lower level of detail cell. Now, currently, to generate these, you need to use a commandlet, and it has to be run from command prompt, and there are a number of steps you have to take. First, I want to go over how hierarchical levels of detail are set up in the Unreal Engine editor. So to create a HLOD, we go to this add button here in our content browser. We go to miscellaneous and we have this HLOD layer option. We're going to select it, open it up, and we have a variety of options here. Now again, I'm going off of the old documentation for early access as the new documentation for the preview of the release of Unreal Engine 5 is not yet out. And so not all of the settings here are exactly the same as they were in the past. The layer type has been here the whole time. The is spatially loaded is new, but the explanation for it is simple enough to understand. It just determines whether or not the HLOD actors generated for the layer will be spatially loaded by the streaming sources, by what's around them. We have a cell size, a loading range, and a parent layer. Now, reading from the documentation, the parent layer enables the assets created by this HLOD layer to be automatically assigned to a designated HLOD layer. For now, we're going to leave that on default. But I do want to talk about layer types. There were three in early access. There are five options here in the preview version, the new ones being approximated mesh and custom. I'm going to cover the three here and everything that I cannot cover in this video, I will cover in a subsequent video once the documentation is released. Reading from the documentation, static mesh assets in this type of layer are replaced with instant static mesh components using the lowest level of detail settings for those assets. This type is ideal for imposter meshes such as trees and foliage. Then we have merged mesh. Static mesh assets in this type of layer are merged to create a single proxy mesh. And finally, we have simplified mesh. Static mesh assets in this type of layer are merged into a single proxy mesh, and mesh simpl simplification is performed. I'm going to leave this on instancing. And it's super important to know that you can use multiple HLOD layers in a map. You could, for example, assign an instance layer to all the trees and foliage in your map, and then you could assign a merged mesh layer to be used by everything else. And the easiest way to do that is just go to World Settings, World Partition, and to set a default HLOD layer. I'll choose this HLOD layer instancing that's already here by default in the engine. And if there is any actor that I wanted to use a different type of layer with, I just go to its details panel and set it to use that layer. I'll go ahead and show you how that works. I'll create a cube here. And if we scroll down, we should eventually find the setting category titled HLOD, where we can then assign a HLOD layer that will overwrite the HLOD layer set in world settings.
So we have an HLED layer set up. We have a landscape, which in a world that uses world partition. Now the only step left is to actually generate our HLODs for the map. Now keep in mind that you have to regenerate these when you make edits, so it's a step best saved for last. Or at least until we get a, an engine tool and then it might be easier to work on your level a bit, generate your HLODs, and then continue to work on it. I'm not sure. Technically you could take that workflow approach currently, but it is a bit of a hassle because we have to use the command line. Now the only thing left to do is to generate our HLODs for the level. But that is going to be a task for another video. There's a lot of nuance, a lot of complexity, a lot of things to cover. And I want to take a bit more time to understand everything within myself before I get into that. There you have it. Some of the new features with World Partition in the Unreal Engine 5 preview. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to cover absolutely everything that's changed, that's new. There's just not enough information out yet on the new details. But I've covered what I could, and I will put out a subsequent video when once the documentation for Unreal Engine 5 is released. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. You can join the Discord through the link down in the description below. I'll see you there.